Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips and welcome to another video. Now in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create an interactive window box card and you can definitely create this without any dies, but if you're anything like me and you want to not really worry about the mathematics and how everything's going to fit together perfectly, I'm going to be using these window box die sets from Tonic. They come in a variety of different styles so you can kind of choose one that you like. And it also has this window box slit you want to purchase too and these has the two dies that creates those little areas for these to perfectly fit in on your card. So these are for 6x6 card bases and I'm going to be showing how to use them in today's tutorial. Okay, so for today's video I'm using the Tangled Terrace window box die set. I think this will be a great area for little grass. And inside here, you get the decorative portions on the inside and then the parts to actually cut the interactive portion. So I'll be pulling these two out. I'm not gonna use the decorative portion in today's video, but that can be super fun as those are super detailed and fun to color as well. So I'll just place that onto a piece of cardstock and we're gonna run this right through my Gemini Junior to cut it out. So I don't usually create cards that are as large as six by six, but today I need it to create this card for the die set. So I'm going to share how to make a 6x6 card base out of 8.5 by 11 card stock. So here I've cut down two square panels, or one a little bit longer. So this one is 6x6, and this one is 6x6 and 1 fourth. So what we're going to do is create our card base here. So all I need to do is put this in the scoring tool, and I'm just going to score it at 1 fourth. So I'll score it right here. And then we can fold that little area over. So just give it a nice crease. And this will be the area where we add our adhesive to connect the card base together. So to put this together, I've added a piece of score tape right on the outside of that fold to hold it together really nicely. And then I'm going to take my 6x6 card base, and I'm going to line it up right in one corner here. And then to make sure it's nice and adhered, I'll take my bone folder and just press it down right here. So that'll just make sure that's nice and adhered together. And there you have your folded card. Okay, so before I get on into the interactive portion, I want to first decorate the backgrounds and do all my ink blending before I put anything interactive together. That way we can get all the coloring done and create our own kind of colored cardstock. I have a little piece of cardstock that's just a bit smaller than our 6x6 card base and we're going to be creating a nighttime sky on this. So I'm starting off the background here with some tattered rose distress oxide. And some of this is going to get covered up anyway later on. So I'll blend that out and then I'm going to move on into the wild honey color. I'll tap off the excess ink and then I'll start blending it onto my background. So I'll just blend in from both sides here. And then I'll blend in back some of that pink color there. And then I'll go in with some warm lipstick. This is a darker pink. So I'll bring this right above that orange color. We'll create kind of a sunset background here. So after I've done that, I'm going to bring in some seedless preserves to add that dark purple to the top. And you can always go back and forth between the colors to make sure they're nice and blended. So I'm bringing back in my pink blending tool. And then to finish it off, I'll bring in some blueprint sketch here. And this will kind of cover up that top part of the background and you can throw in some blue over top of that purple because this is a nighttime sky so we want that blue to be pretty prominent in this. I'll kind of bring that down a little bit more. So before I'm finished here I want to go in with just some black soot since we want the top of the sky to be a little bit darker since we're creating that kind of sunset nighttime sky. So I'll just come in the top edges here and add a little bit of that dark black color. So once this is finished, I'm gonna go in with my spray bottle and I'll just kind of spray down lightly to get larger blots of color out there. And this will create some little um, 
this will lift some of that color off so it'll kind of create little stars and a little bit of variation in that background. So it lifted off quite a bit of color there. And then I'm gonna go in and heat this up to make sure it's nice and dry. Now for these other little pieces that we've cut out, I'm gonna go in and create a little grass kind of scene. So I'll go in here with some crushed olive. I love this color. It's a nice bright green with kind of a yellow kind of undertone to it. So I'm just going to start at the top and blend down there. And I'm not gonna color this whole thing fully. I wanna leave a little bit of that white color still left at the bottom. So I'm really fading that crushed olive down to that bottom of the piece there, and I'll leave a little bit of that white space. Do the same thing on this one right here. And then to add a little bit of shading to these, I'll go in with a little bit of that mowed lawn color and just add a touch of green to the top of these as well. So this just adds a little bit of shading and a darker color to the top. And I'll do the exact same thing on this larger one as well. Okay, so now let's get on into the interactive portion of the card. So I'm using these window box slit dies and these cut those perfect little tiny slits for your interactive portions to sit into. So I'm going to take this first square piece and this is going to cut into our background here. So it has this little arrow and that little arrow points down to the corner that it needs to be in. And I'll take a little bit of purple tape and we'll make sure it's nice and lined up there. And then I'll tape this down into that corner and that'll cut that perfect little area for us. And then I'll take this piece and this one points right down into this corner. So this is the larger kind of tabbed area. And I'll line it right up there. Make sure it's in that corner. And I'll take this down and we can run both of these areas through our Gemini then to cut out these little slits. Okay, so to adhere this together, I'm gonna take the outside tab on the larger piece first and I'll flip over my background here and I'm just going to adhere this piece down at the bottom. Okay, so I've adhered that bottom tab at the outside edge here, and I'm going to do the same thing with this piece too. So I'll take the outside tab, I'll flip over the background on the other side, and I'll adhere this right at the bottom edge. And then both of these are adhered down and they can fold inside and you just want to make sure that they're creased really nicely there. So then this larger portion fits perfectly into this tab right here that you cut out with the die. And then this smaller portion fits right into this other side. Just kind of want to pop that little tab out and it fits right into that section. So here you have your card and it's really nice and 3D. Okay, so now it's time to decorate the card, and I'm going to be stamping down an image from the In Paris stamp set. I want this dog, but I want two of them facing each other. So to get the mirrored image, we're going to be doing a little bit of some stamping tricks to kind of figure that out. Now Jennifer McGuire has a whole video on that, so I'll link it on screen here for you guys to check it out. She really goes in detail explaining it. All I'm going to do is pull out the foam piece of my Misty, and I'll take a piece of plastic acetate packaging, and I'll put it right in the corner there, and then put that little dog down. And on the opposite side, I have this backdrop stamp from Neat and Tangled, and it's just a completely solid stamp that will transfer the ink. So I'm gonna take the stamp and make sure that it's nicely inked up the whole way. And then I can take it, place it in that corner there, and I'll turn over the lid of the Misty and transfer that ink. You can do this however many times you want to really make sure you have a nice solid black image. So I'll go in there one more time with that ink pad. And you don't want to press too hard because you're using clear stamps here. But once I've done that twice, so you get that really solid image, I'll put the foam right back in. And then I'll take a piece of cardstock and place it right in my Misty here and stamp that right down. And there you go, we have a transferred image. It's not completely perfect, but it does transfer really nicely. And I find just doing it one time isn't solid enough. So having, being able to stamp that twice there really is helpful. Then I'm gonna take that second image and just on an acrylic block, I'll take it and I'll flip it over. I wanna get right above it to make sure it's nice and lined up. And then I'll stamp it right down onto my surface.
Okay, so now that we have all of our pieces cut out, we can start tearing them on our card and finish off decorating it. So I'm going to take this fun little dog piece and I'm using collage matte medium. I find this is really strong adhesive and it'll hold up nicely um, since this piece will be kind of moving around. So I'll take some adhesive and add it right to their legs there. And I can add that straight to this little section of the card. And I like doing this when it's up like this because um, then it shows you exactly where everything is going to be and you can kind of stick things behind each other. So then I'll take the Eiffel Tower and we're kind of creating this little scene in Paris. And I'll adhere that right behind them there. You want to give it just a second or two for this to dry. Um, so I just hold it down in place. And, and then I'll add some collage matte medium onto these little hot air balloons. And we'll put these little two balloons floating up in the background. So this is so much fun to kind of build a scene with a set like this. And um, this little interactive card makes it so easy to have all those fun different layers on the card too. And I'll stamp this down in my black ink right on that little folded piece. So this will just stand out as my sentiment and it'll be right on the front of that card. Okay, so once we've adhered everything together and glued everything on the card, we've finished it off really nicely. So I've kind of collapsed it here so you can see it's really nice and flat for those cards, uh, for the envelope if you wanna mail it. I didn't put any foam tape on it purposefully for that reason. And then when your recipient gets it, you can leave them a little message to uh, kind of put it together like this. And you just slide those two little flaps in super easily. And then it can go on display like this. And this is such a fun way to have the card displayed and have this kind of pop up on your shelf. And it really creates an awesome 3D card in the end. All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed that video as much as I loved creating this card. It was super fun and really easy with those dies, so I hope you guys will give it a try as well. Now leave me a comment down below letting me know which part of this card is your favorite and if you would try creating a card like this. And also please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Be sure to click that subscribe button down below to join the family and never miss another video. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.